This video is sponsored by NordVPN. A few days ago, we covered some of my favourite easter eggs and references to other Zelda games found in Twilight Princess. Like a character designed as a reference to Tingle, or a callback to a shop-themed secret from Link's Awakening. While the game has some really cool references, The Wind Waker might have even more. Like Phantom Ganon's sword reading Zabora Gabora, a reference to the blacksmiths from Majora's Mask. So subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's look at some easter eggs and references in Link's seafaring adventure. Travel across the Wind Waker's world is difficult for many races. No longer can horses, carts, or simply walking take you from town to town. Hylians are forced to sail the Great Sea, braving hazards like cyclones, peahats, and even the dreaded Big Octos. This is a problem which the Rito don't face, soaring through the skies on wings bestowed upon them by their patron deity, Valu. Because of their ability to fly from island to island, the Ritos serve the various people of the Great Sea as postmen, allowing swift communication via the system of postboxes. Quill is one of the first characters we meet in-game. In fact, he's who persuades the pirates to take Link to the Forsaken Fortress, beginning his adventure. But while Quill is the most important Rito postman in the game, we're interested in one who we never see take flight. Kaboli, found at the mail centre on Dragon Roost Island, where post is sorted for delivery. If you've played either of the N64 Zeldas, Kaboli will look familiar, and that's because his face is based on the Running Man from Ocarina of Time, or more specifically, the Postman from Majora's Mask, Oracle of Ages, and the Minish Cap. Not only is Kaboli designed to look like the Postman, his figurine suggests that he might actually owe this look to genetics, and that he's descended from the Postman. Considering that he's a Rito, who evolved from the Zora, and the Postman is Hylian, this creates a bit of a messy family tree, but it's a great reference either way. In the N64 Zeldas, Link can cut wooden signs, rendering them, obviously, unreadable. However, a cool trick in both games is the ability to repair the signs he's destroyed by playing the main ocarina song in the game, either Zelda's lullaby in Ocarina of Time or the Song of Healing in Majora's Mask, causing the sign to magically repair itself. Most likely as a reference to this weird little detail, Link can repair cut signs in the Wind Waker too, by conducting the Wind God's Aria, which causes signs to, just like the N64 games, magically fly back into place. Just like how Zelda's Lullaby and the Song of Healing are the main instrument songs in their game, the Wind God's Aria could be considered one of the Wind Waker's main songs. Alongside the Earth God's lyric, it makes up the main theme of the game, and wind is obviously a more primary element in the game than Earth. Speaking of Earth, the Sage of Earth, Makar, shares his home island with one of the more interesting places in the game, the Nintendo Gallery. The gallery acts as a sort of expanded, physical Hyrule Compendium. By snapping pictographs of enemies, characters and bosses, Link can have Karloff sculpt them and place their figurines in the gallery. This means we get some interesting information on various characters in the game, like that Floor Masters are apparently surprisingly lonely, or that Missy is… just an ordinary elderly woman. Maybe they're not all that interesting. But the Nintendo Gallery is home to a couple of easter eggs and references, like the mention that the rats who hold bombs are apparently known as Bombchu, a reference to the exploding rodents from other games in the series. Manny, the kid who hangs out at the figurine gallery, actually has an Octorok sprite on his bag, a callback to the very first Zelda game on the NES. It's fitting, for a character who's basically just a Nintendo fanboy, to have a little reference to the first game on his bag. Karlov's workstation is packed with figurines, both work in progress and fully complete. 
Most are from the Wind Waker, like a submarine, Nehru's statue, Windfall Island, or the pirate ship. But it also has a bunch of items which will be familiar to you if you've played the N64 Zelda games. Like the Bunny Hood and the All Knight, Goron, and Keaton masks, from Majora's Mask. He's a master sculptor, so these are most likely replicas, but still, it's cool to see him here. Not only this, but Karlov appears to be working on sculpting a bust of a female character, which sits unpainted on his desk. This hairstyle might look familiar to you. It's actually Saria from Ocarina of Time. I've previously mentioned how Saria's house might actually appear in the Forbidden Woods, so it's great that there's another reference to the Sage of Forest found in Forest Haven. The sign under which Karlov stands also references a classic Zelda staple, a cuckoo, which don't actually appear in The Wind Waker. And just below this, on the desk, is a book which features the postman's logo. Towards the back, hanging from the ceiling, we have one of Tijo's drums. And finally, on the lower shelf, we can see three bottles with familiar looking labels. A cow with Hylian text on either side. And the text translates to Lon Lon, just like Lon Lon milk from Ocarina of Time. The bottles appear to be filled with a blue liquid, however, so it's not milk, or at least not fresh milk. This isn't the only reference to Lon Lon milk in the game. All the way across the Great Sea on Windfall Island, we find the Cafe Bar, where travellers and islanders alike come to unwind and converse. There aren't any bottles of Lon Lon milk found here, but there is a menu written on the chalkboard in Hylian. If translated, and then translated again from Japanese, we learn that it's today's recommendations, including Lon Lon milk for 150 rupees, a Deku nut cake for 300, or Zora coffee for 250. Considering that there's no Lon Lon ranch anymore, no Deku nuts are found in the game, and the Zoras are long extinct, it's a mystery how the cafe actually serves any of this, but it's three great references in one. Link and the King of Red Lions can sail between the islands of the Great Sea with ease, exploring the secrets of all areas of the world. Similarly, NordVPN allows you to switch your location to any one of 58 countries, using one of their nearly 6,000 different servers. Most streaming services separate what's available to you depending on what region you're in. Over here in England, we've got our, admittedly better, version of The Office. Yeah, you are the best. It's their opinion. While in the States, you can watch your own. With NordVPN on your phone, PC, or laptop, you can switch your location to wherever you'd like unlocking content you'd otherwise not have. In addition to this, the service provides online anonymity. You can use the internet knowing that your data is encrypted twice, meaning not even your service provider can track your browsing. If you'd like to grab NordVPN, they're offering 70% off a three-year plan. If you head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Zeltic or use code Zeltic. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee if it's not for you. So head over to nordvpn.com forward slash Zeltic and grab internet security for 70% off. Something I'd written down in my notes for the Twilight Princess video, but never mentioned for some reason, is a little easter egg that's linked to the Wind Waker, so I'll mention it here. In the cemetery behind Kakariko Village, at the far end of which Link meets Queen Rutella, there are multiple old gravestones, askew and half buried. Etched into the stone is Hylian text, though notably it's Wind Waker Hylian, not the alphabet used in Twilight Princess. And this text is actually a section of the Hylian text found in the Wind Waker's opening prologue, which appears alongside the artwork and tells the story of the Great Flood. Why this particular text appears on the gravestones in Twilight Princess is unclear, probably just a little secret for whoever translates it. Back to the Wind Waker, there's a minor Ocarina of Time reference found on the three goddess statues on the Triangle Islands, where Link places the pearls to cause the Tower of the Gods to rise from the depths. The bases of these statues feature Hylian text, which translates to read Din's Fire, Nehru's Love, and Furore's Wind, the three goddess spells from Ocarina of Time. 
The Wind Waker stands out in that it's one of a very few Zelda games in which Link has a family. He lives on Outset Island in the south with his grandma and younger sister, Aril. Aril is the very first character we see in-game, looking for Link on the morning of his birthday. While she's a solid character in her own right, and adds a lot of emotional impact to the story, she is, in herself, a reference to another Zelda character, Marin from Link's Awakening. In fact, during development, Aril was going to be named Mariru, after Marin. Obviously, they didn't go in this direction with her character, but references to the Koholint Islander can still be seen, such as the red flowers on Aril's dress, referencing the flower in Marin's hair, and Aril's love of seagulls, which even decorate her prized telescope, referencing Marin's obvious connection to seagulls, her eventual escape of the dream of Koholint, living on as a seagull in the true ending to the game. And while we're on the topic of Link's Awakening, I noticed a tiny nod to the game while playing New Horizons earlier. Gulliver washed up on my beach, saying, But verily, it be the nature of dreams to end. The same line spoken by the Windfish at the end of the game. In the Twilight Princess video, I ended off by showing how Possessed Zelda's Dead Man's Volley can be played using just an empty bottle as a reference to the same trick from Ocarina of Time, where using an empty bottle will reflect Ganondorf's magic back at him, which in itself is most likely a reference to using the bug net to reflect Aghanim's magic in A Link to the Past. Well, what better way to end off this look at the Wind Waker's easter eggs and references than the same thing? During the Phantom Ganon boss fights, Link can again deflect the powerful orbs of energy back at the boss using only an empty bottle. And not only this, the joke is actually referenced in-game. Phantom Ganon's figurine at the Nintendo Gallery explains how to beat the spirit, by knocking back his balls of magic with your sword, but that it's actually possible to just use empty bottles to do this too. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. And also be sure to check out NordVPN and secure yourself online. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.